Tonight, I'm kicking it with Torre and Joey Pert. I'm going jewelry shopping with the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. And I'm sitting down with the one and only Anderson Pop. Complex is staying open late. My name is Peter Hello. Rosenberg, and today I have some wonderful people on the couch with me. First, he's a personality. He's an artist. He's a CEO. He has a brand new album called, I believe, All Praises Do. Torre is here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And next up, you better mention this man's name in the conversation for best albums out right now. He's got a new record called Quarter Thing. He reps the shy. Make some noise for Joey Perp. <laughs> Um, all right, we're going to talk about both you guys' albums in just a second. But first of all, there's a lot of news this week. The incredible free pub coming for the BET Hip Hop Awards is out of control. Everyone's talking about a cipher that happened this year when Vic Mensa supposedly called out uh, the industry's celebration of abusers and name checked the late XXX Tentacion specifically. Now, this upset many people because X's mother was present at the ceremony. Vic then just put out a, a, an apology later about the timing of the statement, but also stood by his message. Um, guys, can you be critical of an artist that has passed? I'll start with you, Joey. Um, off top, I think you can be critical of anyone. Like, no one is like a you know, free of judgment, you know what I'm saying? Like anybody can have their like decisions assessed. Um, I think it's out of place to, you know, address people in a disrespectful way once they pass. Cause no matter how anybody feels about that individual, you know, like some terrible happened to him and his family. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people also constantly refer to X as a legend. When a new artist who has the potential to be a brilliant artist for a long time passes away, are they instantaneously a legend? No. You, I mean, the definition of le you have to have had some time. You know what I'm saying? Nothing can be legendary in the moment. You know what I mean? That's the, that goes the same for classic album. Your album dropped Thursday, Friday, it's a classic. Like, you gotta <laughs> give things a time to gain the notoriety and, and grow and evolve and, and, and still be looked at the same way they were in that moment. And every old rapper is not a legend either. Like, we gotta stop too. throwing away. Yeah, that's a great point. Say, Yo, fam, just because you're old and living fam. doesn't mean you're a legend yeah, either. You fact. just 52, fam, that's it. You just, you just 52. Speaking of people who will one day be legends, earlier this week, the Migos got on Instagram they already legend. and called Here themselves the greatest of all time. Well, uh, this Friday, Quavo's dropping his self-titled solo debut. Make some noise for Quavo's solo song. Um, now, he's really not the first uh, member of the Migos to test the waters. Offset dropped his album with Metro Boomin last year. But is all this exciting good news about solo projects the beginning of the end? It could be. It could be. We've seen this before. And, I mean, you want to say no off top, you know, because they're family and they have such a great camaraderie and they sound so great together and they bounce off each other really well. But at the same time, solo success changes things. But do you think this could be the beginning of the end, Joey? No, for definitely the not. I think they're going to be super straight. Could you name three groups that were together and then somebody dropped solo albums and then they spell off? Uh, you want me to start naming? I mean, I just don't NWA know. NWA fell, broke up, Them fell niggas off. didn't know each other like that. Them, they, they EPM, knew each other. EPMD. I don't know about EPMD. Best friends. Best friends. They fell, probably fell was. Off. They probably was. There was friends. kidnapping. There right, was. Right, right, right. Now it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. The, it was crazy. It they was were crazy. best friends for real. Bro, the Migos, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas been together, bro, through thick and thin. They're not it's going different nowhere. The depth is so it's it's different, so bro. It's right different. I also yeah, think yeah. having OGs like 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 Coach K and Definitely. P in their corner yeah, will help. Coach you know what I'm saying? Coach not letting egos get in the way. Come on, man. Drew Hill didn't have that. Yeah, I mean, Cisco was just out here. Cisco just was out here doing his thing. There was no Coach ah! K. 
That's all I'm saying. Joe Yo, listen, I want you to know. <laughs> um, all right, the NBA season kicks off in just a few days, and we know there's always been like mutual respect and admiration between rappers and basketball players. Right now, as it stands, if you were to be like a mid-level rapper versus a mid-level ball player, who has more clout? Real clout is when you can go pull that loan out and pay for your cars and crib for the rest of your life because you was getting paid 3.5 and you wasn't getting no tick and you're not injured and your wife bad as hell. That's real clout. Mid-level rapper clout, nigga, I got that. I'll trade that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll trade that shit for Devin Booker's contract any day, you feel me? Like, I mean, in my opinion, like a mid-level rapper, like somebody like Lil Baby, buzzing right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, doesn't have a bunch of music out, Damn, you know what I'm saying? that's mid-level now, though, for Lil Baby got platinum tracks, yeah, bro. He that nigga is but he not just, mid-level, he's, he's, That he's, man is top tier right yeah, now. I, I gotta, I, I'm agreeing with Joey. Yo, I think bro. you gotta go down a level. I'm saying, All right, so bro, who's under? Who's... who's um, we gonna spoil somebody yeah, I don't when they hear this. I ain't trying to hit nobody this with that straight. Open late. I'm not trying to hit nobody with that straight. All I'm saying is, I, is I, that I, Kelly Oubre Jr. gets paid $5 million a year, nigga. If we're talking about Come money, on, if we're talking about money, it doesn't compare. Brian but Clout, Scalabrini like, was getting overall. 1.7, bro. Brian Scalabrini, the white mama. I think the Knicks still playing Adams. Allen Hughes. I think we still playing the Allen Hughes. Capital Houston. A. And right he, wasn't, now. he wasn't even mid-level. He I wasn't mid-level. He was, he was low level. Come on, bro. He was an indie rapper with one song on college radio. <laughs> yes, bro. I know yes. that guy. Come I on, man. <laughs> I still think that hip hop trumps all because it's the biggest selling streaming, you know what I'm saying, visual genre of music out there right now. They're using hip hop to sell any and everything from Target commercials to Pepsi to everything. And rappers are, are really recognizable. Whereas you could walk down the street and That's just true. walk past Nate Robinson and not know it's him. I think we can all agree they're all every mid-level basketball player is doing better than all three of us. Could. That's a fact. That's a all fact. Right. That's a fact. Before I let you guys go, we like to open up the floor to all of our fans on social media and debate a topic of their choosing. This is called Settle It For Me. <laughs> At Matt Daigle tweeted me and said, is cannabis the game's biggest shoulda, woulda, coulda talent? What went wrong? I'm gonna tweak the question just a little bit and ask you guys. Who is the biggest shoulda, woulda, coulda rapper of all time? I mean, I think Lloyd Banks had stupid potential. Like, Lloyd Banks could have been He was in the a good place. Dude. You know what I'm saying? He like, I mean, place, he had it all. You he know, G-Unit affiliation, you know, in the scope machine behind him. The ladies dug him, the streets dug him. He knew how to make, you know, relatively good records that could cross over. And it just never kept going. You know, a lot of people talk about his work ethic. Uh, his relationship may have been strained with, with Fifth or whatever. But um, I just felt like Lloyd Banks had everything. Like, if you check the boxes, he kind of checked all the boxes. I think that's go. a good call because Lloyd still had, you know, a nice career. Did well for himself. For sure. It's just... Yeah, there are a lot of people who think he's the nicest. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's a matter of did you live up to your potential? Right. And Joey, what about you? Tupac, fo, instantly. Tupac would have been Will Smith if he kept acting, fo. Oh. Tupac could be the biggest person on the planet. If he could have stayed act, if yeah, he could have lived. Like, right. What he did is dwarfed in comparison to what he was going to do. That nigga might have been the president, like real T. He was such a leader, such a valuable I, voice. I, I, and he could act. I mean, obviously. He, he can act, he too. That's what murdered. took it to another level. Yeah. Like, picture Tupac in Pursuit of Happiness, bro. Come on, G. Tupac, you will really believe that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't believe Will? Will killed it. Will killed it. But it was him and his son. Pay a bill. Head. In my head, I'm thinking, like, <laughs> they going to go home tonight and somebody going to, like, clean their whole crib. Low key. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyone else in the audience that you guys think wasted potential? Names you were thinking? Frank. Oh, speaker knockers! <laughs> yes! Speaker knockers. Hey, I can merge. Speaker knockers would be the biggest thing in music right now. He invented that style. No diss to A Boogie, but speaker knockers did it first, and they look alike. Mine, the story is not over yet, but if it doesn't change the way it's been going, Azalea Banks. Oh, that's a good one! Man. That's a great one. Yo, you know, she is the fucking truth. You know how Yo, fucking talented she is? All she Azalea gotta do is, beast, is go in the booth, Say what you want to say there, and then don't say nothing else once she leaves. Well, bad and news. She will be the biggest shit ever. And you know, she right seemed like one of them artists that just need to not have a Twitter, fuck. Like, no Twitter, no Instagram. 
she can say whatever the fuck she want. We not gonna hear it. I, it's exactly. not gonna be on the internet. She can no, literally I, say anything she wants to say as long as it's not on Twitter. I mean, her Instagram. team can take her Twitter, but then she just gonna do a KD move and have a burner account. That's decent. By the way, you guys, it took <laughs> niggas like six years to find KD. <laughs> KD was decent until his man's tagged him in a photo. <laughs> like, oh shit, my bad, wrong tag, God. <laughs> it's settled. It's settled. If you have a topic you want us to settle, hit us up with the hashtag settle it. All right, now let's take a second and talk about your guys' albums really quickly. Mm-hmm. Per your album's crazy. You got Rizzo on there. Yes, uh, Jizz on there. You got Jizz on there. It's, it's unbelievable. First of all, why the Wu-Tang influence and tell people why they need to go out and get this album? Yeah, man. I just wanted to, to, to pay that respect and to have that be in the, in the history books. Like when people look back on what I brought forth, they're going to see my influences. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted it to be all Chicago features. I got Queen Key on the album. I got C. Huncho on the album. I got Raven Lene on the album. And then... Um, and then Wu Tang, that's, know, that's, that's, the Jizzle. It's you should be proud of it. It's fire. Appreciate fire. you, brother. Um, all right, all praises due. Torre, you've yes. been a great MC for a long time, but you're on Hip Hop Nation every day doing radio, and you do a great job of that. Why this album? Why will people love it? Um, this is what people want from me. You know, it's no concepts, it's no radio records, it's no. It's just the beats is hard, the rhymes is hard. Let's go. It's a quick EP, uh, all produced by Praise. No real big features. Just me going and then blacking. All right, guys, one more time for Torre and Joey Perp. Yeah. As many people around the world have noticed, there's been a slight Rosenberg drip upgrade this season. All thanks to my guy, stylist Marty McFresh hey. over there. Hey, Marty. But now, I've decided to glow up a bit, and I'm attempting to buy my first Rolex. So who better to help me pick out than the star of WWE 2K19's Woo Edition, the nature boy Ric Flair himself. So check out what happened when me and Rick stopped by to see my boy Mr. Flawless's Chapter 2 store in the Diamond District. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited because I wanted to buy a watch and I thought who better to buy my first Rolex with than the nature boy, Ric Flair. The Rolex wearing. The Rolex wearing, it's in your name, how are you? Very good, thank you. You have your own special woo edition of 2K19. Yeah, and they're giving me 50% of the royalty. Is is that true? Wow, 50%, (laughs) what a deal from 2K. (laughs) Do you hear that, Mr. McMahon? (laughs) (laughs) He's goddammit, what? (laughs) But let's see. As we check wow. out some of Mr. Flawless's finest here. I don't know if our taste will be exactly the same. Okay. You know, some would say you're a little flashier than I am. I'm really liking this chain. This one here? Yes. This yeah. is a serious item here. Now that's this is something heavy. I could wear to the airport today. <laughs> you think so? They I don't would, know if you get through security. They would love that LaGuardia. Uh, by the way, this would definitely be offset approved as well. Yes. How, how's Offset's jewelry game, by the way? Unbelievable. Yeah, he has, of all the uh, rappers I've been around or uh, musicians, he's got the most unique stuff. I've really? Seen. Yeah, he and uh, Bad Bunny. Jay Frost, what can yep. you tell us about this piece right here? <clears throat> so this piece here, we actually did for uh, Lil Yachty. It's a uh, anchor. Of course, mm-hmm. little boat. Yeah, it's about 60 carats in all VS, D, E, F wow. color stones. Solid, it's about 100,000. So I've been considering my first Rolex. I want to know what your thoughts are on this. Is it too, it's a little too plain for you, isn't it? Uh, and too plain for you. Too plain for me? Yeah, you need something with a little... You want more flash? Plain, uh, yeah, at least a bezel. At least a bezel. Now, bit. this with a bezel, very nice. Now, how much would I be looking at if I wanted to get a bezel? A bezel is this right here. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're looking for his size bezel, it's a pretty big bezel. And that's big, but for actually. You want like a basic? Just a regular bezel. Just a regular bezel. Regular bezel, bezel probably yeah. like 2000 You want to be able to go home like, without hearing your wife go, hey. Let me see, here, let me see if I, um, how it feels first. I've never even really... And, and, and just my new wife now has money. Oh, your wife has I, money. I, I've had four other orphans. It's called Wellflare. <laughs> Wellflare! Yeah, I've never heard of Wellflare. Oh, yeah, well, it's a beautiful fit, though. It is very nice. So you think just a little bit of ice on the... Yeah, you're, bit, you're Peter Rosenberg. Bit. You cannot be one of the top three or four celebrities in New York City and not have a little bling. You know what, it's a great... You want to pl- walk through the door, you want to push it open, you want the sunlight to hit the diamonds. You want someone to turn around. In my case, it would have been a woman years ago. Your case, just, you know, just the little, little kids in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could talk to Flawless and talk about, dude, just put a little yeah. ice on the bed. Simple. Oh, you could do that in 15 minutes. And you think this is a good, because what year is this watch? This, or this is a newer this one. Is 90, 90, so this is a 91. Yeah. And this, this is used? Yeah. yeah this is a That's 91. a pre owned, yeah. Oh, well, first of all. I love the look of this one, though, Nate. Look at my shirt. I'm a vintage kind of guy. That's kind of who I am, though. 
Are you disgusted by this idea? You need, you need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I. I don't know if I can go home to my wife. You, if I get a new. You, you, I don't know if I can do you, it. Can, you're a celebrity. You can't go home with a used watch. <laughs> I have to get a new one. You're yeah, saying. Yeah, I know. And yes, the first time out. Here's the thing, Rick. Though I am, though I am Peter Rosenberg. You're 100 right. What I'm not is the Nature Boy Rick Flair. You have a different level. Look what you can pull off, right? You have two Hall of Fame rings, for God's sake. You're wearing them both right I now. Know. Can you put diamonds on these? Of course. <laughs> you could ice these out, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, of course. The WWE Hall of Fame Why ring. Why not? Thanks, Nate. Thank you, sir. Great job, bud. And don't forget to get the Woo edition. That's right. Of 2K19. I will be back. Yeah, just, just okay. know that. Without the cameras. Yeah. Looking for a deal and a payment plan. <laughs>
Tell us about Dr. Dre's involvement with this project. So involved. He mixed the whole project. He was. He and do was, you watch it? Like, do we sit there and watch him mix? Yeah, until it. You know, he plays the music really loud. So until I can't take it no more, then I, I need. And a you break. take a little break. I need a break. Even if it's your music, it's still too loud. Oh sometimes. my god. He is blasting that. I'm like, Dre, you cannot be serious. Can you turn it down a little bit? And he's just like, no, I need to keep the heads ringing. <laughs> I need to keep the heads ringing. He's never actually said that. <laughs> this is so funny. Because hey. in my head, I'm wondering, I'm like, has he ever called? He's just been like, yeah. Yeah, I know. Going what on. up, AP? What up? <laughs> no, he's straight to the point. But he like he liked the music so loud that his shirt is moving. Like, that's, that's, what he, that's, that's really what he likes. So it's like... Man, it's it's dope. Oh, it's fire. Keep the heads ring. <laughs> <laughs> when you're with da -da, da -da, da -da. <laughs> when you're with a real music head like Anderson Park, you know we gotta do it. It's time for digging in the crates. Hey. All right, Anderson Park is here. It's digging in the crates. So I'm gonna just grab a record and you just tell me thoughts, whatever feelings come to mind when I show you this album, okay? Um, we were just talking about the man, so it's only right. Let's talk about this piece of work. Right here. I just want to fuck bad bitches. <laughs> Is that the one for you? Now I'm all up in that ass, bitches. <laughs> Damn, man, there's so many cuts on there. You know the dope thing about this too, man, and, and about a lot of Dre albums, the skits. Yeah, there's a real classic skit on this, a real X-rated. I remember when I had this album playing, you know what I'm saying? First time we was listening to it, it was actually in the church parking lot. I grew up playing in church. <laughs> Shit, I just came out, so we was super just posting the parking lot, reading all the credits. And that's the, what's the skit? The little, the orgy skit? Yep. Uh -huh. In my eye? Yeah, all kinds of shit. There's that nothing was, like a good, overly dude, sexual, awkward sexual interlude on a hip-hop album. We're bringing that back on my album. Buddy. Yes! Yo, you're going to feel uncomfortable with your parents in the Super car again. Super uncomfortable. Super uncomfortable. Uncomfortable music. Yeah, this is everything. This is like the blueprint. This is like, um, I mean, of course, the, the Chronic One, you know, that was great. But then when, when this came out, I was actually like playing drums. I was like, I wanted to make beats. I, I, I was like, I think the next summer I got an NPC. So like Mailman, all these dudes like on here. Oh man, uh, uh, what's it? Hitman, you know, M was going in. Uh, X, Devin. Zibit was killing Devin the dude. Yeah, this is just oh man. I, I I actually I don't know if it's the difference between me being in middle school and being in college between the two albums, but for me honestly, if if I was forced to go to a desert island, I would actually take this one. Like this this could be right there with my favorite albums of all time because it's one it's such a long album and there's not a weak spot at any point on it. But but you know what? Yeah, the watcher is probably. The, that's the one. Dum, dum, dum. That's the one. That shit is. Dum, dum, dum. Yo, it's a, it's a mass. This is true. This is what a masterpiece is. Uh, I'm very, very excited for this new album. We look forward to it. We thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you for coming by, man. Thank you, man. Anderson Pot, ladies and gentlemen. Um, also, big thank you to Torre, Joey Perp, and of course the Nature Boy, Rick. Lair. Remember, everyone, tickets are still available to Complex Con coming up November 3rd and 4th, and Open Late's going to be there. Now, everyone, give it up for the incomparable A Rab Music. <laughs>